STED, Stimulated Emission Depletion Microscopy. No matter how high quality a conventional light microscope may be, the resolution will always be limited by the wavelength of light. When a fluorophore is imaged using conventional fluorescence microscopy, the light from the excitation beam will create a diffraction pattern at the focal point. The radius of the central disk of this diffraction pattern is given by the Abe resolution, lambda over 2na. Therefore, in order to be resolvable by an optical microscope, the fluorophores must be spaced at least this distance apart to be separately resolvable. Since visible light is on the order of hundreds of nanometers, and the best possible NA values are around 1.3 to 1.4, the size of the diffraction spot, or point spread function, poses a barrier for optical imaging of nanoscale materials. One method of getting around this limit is STED, a point spread engineering technique used to create super resolution images. The goal of STED microscopy is to create a PSF that is below the Abe limit for a given wavelength and numerical aperture. This smaller PSF would allow us to resolve smaller image features, including those on the nanoscale. Before getting into the specifics of STED microscopy, I must first explain the difference between fluorescence and stimulated emission. During the fluorescence process, a fluorophore absorbs the energy of an excitation photon and goes from its ground state to a higher energy excited state. After that fluorophore's specific fluorescence lifetime, which lasts several nanoseconds, it will spontaneously return to its lower energy state, releasing a fluorescence photon. The stimulated emission process begins the same way, with the fluorophore absorbing an excitation photon and going to a higher energy state. Once it's reached that state, however, a depletion beam is added. The fluorophore absorbs the depletion photon and returns to the ground state by emitting two photons with wavelengths equivalent to the depletion beam. The wavelength of this depletion beam can be tailored to be significantly different than the fluorescence wavelength. As a result, a filter can be used to block all depletion wavelengths but pass most of the fluorescence wavelengths, preventing detection of those fluorophores that have undergone stimulated emission depletion. Now we return to STED microscopy and PSF engineering. In order to reduce the effective diameter of the excitation laser PSF, the periphery can be suppressed using a ring-shaped depletion laser. During STED microscopy, photoswitchable fluorophores are subjected to a scanning excitation laser pulse, followed immediately by a red-shifted ring-shaped depletion laser pulse, which is referred to as the STED beam. As a result, those fluorophores at the center of the excitation beam will freely fluoresce, while those at the PSF periphery will undergo stimulated emission, producing wavelengths that will be blocked from detection. Since only those fluorophores near the center of the PSF are detected, this combination of laser pulses creates a smaller effective PSF, resulting in an improved image resolution. When using this process, details as small as 20 to 30 nanometers can be resolved, which accounts for an approximately tenfold improvement in resolution over traditional fluorescence microscopy. At this point, we should briefly touch upon the production of the ring-shaped beam, since STED microscopy would not be possible without it. The most common way of producing this ring is modulating the phase of the depletion laser using a spiral phase plate to create a twisted light beam called an optical vortex, which has a non-zero orbital angular momentum. When the number of twists in this beam is an integer, the light at the center will cancel, and a hole called a zero point will be present in the center of the beam, creating the desired ring shape. STED microscopy has a few disadvantages. STED requires complex microscope configurations, as well as specialized and potentially expensive components. Additionally, the high-powered lasers used in this process often cause rapid photobleaching and may even damage the sample, which can cause aberrations. However, there are many benefits as well. In addition to its nanoscale resolution, STED has the advantage of a quick scanning and image capture time which approaches that of laser scanning confocal microscopy. It also does not require any additional sample or image processing, 
which may make it ideal for applications such as live cell imaging. Ultimately, the use of STED versus another nanoscale imaging technique should be decided on a case-by-case -case basis.